Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Yes, I am suited and booted and all ready to go to sea in a boat. But this is no ordinary boat. This is a boat that's been made by one guy on his own and he's done something really weird. That's a mono hull of a boat. He's got it in two pieces, joined up in the middle to make like a, a sort of a catamaran. But by all accounts, it is a masterpiece of finishing and craftsmanship. I'm going down to Gospel in Hampshire, it's in the south of England, for those of you who lived on the other side of the globe. South of England, it's the middle of winter, it's not nice, but we're going down to get this exclusive interview with him and he's going to tell us exactly how he's rigged, fitted out this boat, and by all accounts, it is pretty well spot on. Let's get down there. Well, I designed this boat myself after having a 18 foot monohull version, which is a bit unstable. And I wanted something a bit more beamy, more room, nice little wheelhouse to get three or four people in. Um, the original mould I used was a three piece mould, so I made up a, a separate tunnel section, bolted in between. Now it was a mono, mono hole. This yeah. is the thing is what we want to emphasize for people. This was a mould that you cut in half, is that right? Yeah, the mould was already in two pieces. Yeah. So it was already split because you wouldn't get the boat out of the mould because of the shape. I got you. So that's how they made it in the first place, yeah, a mono that's hole. how it was originally made. And I decided to make a tunnel section. Yes. Bolt it in between. Uh, new transfer mould on it. Laid up the, the basic hull. Yeah. Took it out. Flipped it over. Well, extended the sides up first, extended the bow flipped it over and used that as a plug. Yes. And then that was sanded, painted, and then that produced, the, that allowed me to make the mould. Like your base mould of the hull? Yeah, the, the mould of the hull, yeah. So then yeah. I've got the mould, I've still got the plug, yes. which is five, was made out of fibreglass, so that can still be used as a boat if I ever wanted to. Yes, yes. And then from that, I made out all the gunnels on the plug, Yeah. which was all made out of MDF, filler, bits of cardboard, you name it, just to get the shape. Yes. And that was painted, polished, to produce the gunnel mould. Yeah. And then I had that mould, then I could produce the gunnels myself. Yeah. And then after that we made an MDF wheelhouse. So yeah. the what was the original wheelhouse on the one you had before? What was that was actually a little four foot square Wilson Flyer trawler wheelhouse. Oh really small one then? Yeah, just enough for two people to get in but you could walk right the way round it on, yes. the, on the same deck height. Yeah, yeah. So you, none of this walking up round the gunnels and trying to yeah. Hang on, yeah. as you get round right the front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this one was made with nice walkways around the side. So I saw nice that, yeah, plenty of space to go up for the anchor. Yeah, so you don't have to panic when yeah. you're walking up around the front. Now what about, say, for instance, the bow railings, because you've got yeah. a nice T-bar across the top, all safety stuff. Yeah. How do you, do you have to design those to, for this boat, or can you buy them and adapt them? The, these, these railings were actually made for this boat. Yes. I see them in my head, what I wanted, got in contact with a local stainless fabricator, an old fella, told him what I wanted, made a drew a made up a template of the shape of the gunnel. So he's got the shape on his work on his workshop floor. I and see. he bent all the stainless to that. Then he brought it to the boat and then we put all the uprights in place to get the angles and the height that I wanted all that. Yeah. So yeah. but but now he's made one, he could easily make another one. He could duplicate it. Yeah pretty easy. And how did you make the actual wheelhouse? Because this is a really big wheelhouse, even inside. This, it was, again, it was all made out of MDF. Got the shape I wanted, painted it, polished it, made the mould. Yeah. Then made a, an MDF roof plug. Yeah. Painted it and polished that to the shape I wanted. Took a mould off of that, so that produced the moulds for the wheelhouse. Okay. And then it's just a matter of laying them up. So just so people uh, who won't realise how it's done, you make, let's say, a wood mould yeah. first, you then lay glass in it to get a fiberglass mould? No, what you do is you make, you make a finished wheelhouse basically out yep. of MDF. So yes. From the outside, it's all MDF, and yep. it's got the shape you want. Then you paint on a, a Duratec surface primer, yep. which is a special paint. You sand that, wet flat it, and polish it. Yep. So it looks like a finished boat on the outside, but grey. And that allows you to then wax it, polish it, then gel coat it, and then lay up your layers and layers of fiberglass. Yes. And then that pops off. Then it comes off. That's what that, produ that produces your mould. So the medium you use to separate the wood from the actual fiberglass is what would be the we use a uh, the wax or something like that. Mould release wax. It's a release wax. Actually. Yeah. I've and got you, it now. you can also put on a, a PVA yeah. release agent as well, which is guarantees that the job comes off. Yeah. Sometimes they might stick. So you put on a coat of PVA. You can either spray it on with a gun, yep. just dust it on, or you can wipe it on with a, with a sponge, or, or just wipes it on. 
Now you can obviously you still got that mould originally. Yeah. You can make others from it, wheelhouse and boat, I've, so the I've, whole kit. You I've can knock made, as many out as I've you want. I can make as many as I wanted to. Now I've now I've got the moulds. At first it was look more of a, just a, a one off because I wanted a bigger boat. Yeah. But so many people like it, and I thought, well, what, might as well see if I can hopefully market set. them. Yeah. Yeah. So now tell us what size this is. The actual length and beam. The actual hull length is 19 foot six with a nine foot beam. With the pod on the back, makes it 21 foot six, uh, which is still trailable. Yes. Which is one of the main things I wanted it to be. Um, overall length with the bow sprit and the engines is 7.5 meters, so okay. about 24 and a half foot. Now you've got you, on the back there. You've got uh, what are those twin Mercury? What were they? One one fives. One one fives. Yeah. Okay. Latest four strokes. And you say they're quite light. They're 163 kilos each. Which a friend of mine has got a Mercury 90 Optimax, and that weighs 181 kilos. Does it really? Yeah, that's a two stroke. Okay. Uh, they are they're, they're, they're the lightest 115s on the market today. Twin helm from Mercury, standard for the twin, any, any twin engine setup. Um, gauges, they're all analog, but you can go Smartcraft, but then that's extra money on top. What's a Smartcraft? It's all digital. Yeah. So you, you have a digital rev counter, digital speedo, but the, they have 10 options of settings on each gauge. Oh, see. So you can go through different settings, you can check your, your oil levels and water pressures and engine all that. Running, engine yeah, running, yeah, yeah, engine management. Yeah, basically, yeah, engine management setup, yeah, but that's extra on top of the price of the engine. So gotcha. at the time, couldn't afford it. Exactly. But yeah. we've got that option, we can do that at a later date. Um, electronics wise, uh, radio, radio down there. Lawrence. Link 8 VHF, which is connected direct to the HDS9 Gen 3. That's uh, a fairly recent one, this one. Yes, it's a, that one's about four months old. It's got all the latest Navionics updates on the software. Um, also connected to that unit is the um, side scan sonar yes, yeah. with the down view as well. It's got the little chirp sonar on it as well, so you've got all the different options on the sonar side of it. Do you have a Lawrence card? Oh, not the Lawrence card, what do they call it? The Navionics? Yeah, it's got Navionics uh, Platinum uh, Plus. So it's yeah. got everything on it. That's got everything, and I think yeah. that's the one I've got, yeah. Yeah, that's just been updated about two weeks ago, so it's yeah. got all the latest updates on it. Because you can go online and get updates for that, can't you? Yes, yeah, so you go on to the Navionics website, and just the top right hand corner of their website, up, click on the updates, put in your details, and, and off you go, basically. It's pretty simple. Is the HS9 here? Is that a touchscreen version? Yes, it's touchscreen as well, so I can go back out of that and then just click on whichever whatever I want to do so pretty simple don't pull your fishing marks up because they'll be copying them oh there's not many on there at the moment <laughs> anyway so <laughs> but I'm not one of them people to have secret marks so if yeah. I've got a mark then anybody else can go there yeah I don't care you know, yeah yeah you're just I'm in, not for, one the, of these in secret, for the sport yeah I'm not one of these secret people well, this is my mark get off <laughs> now, now you say there's a hub uh, thing yeah, for you. there's a, a sonic hub yeah which connects to your FM radio, but it's also Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, so you can Bluetooth your phone to it, your your iPad, any little um, gadget you've got. Any little screen, yeah, any little monitor or whatever. You can transfer the screen from the plotter yeah. to your iPad if you wanted to as well, or vice, oh, really? or, or vice versa. So it's all, all very clever stuff. The Sonic Hub is actually hidden out of the way yes, underneath yeah. the dashboard, so doesn't get knocked. That's all. How did you see in the surface cover in here? How did you do all that? And what's are, it made of? These are just plywood panels. Six mil plywood panels. Yes. Covered with an acoustic carpet. Yeah. Which they're using a lot of the car stereo stuff in yeah. cars and things like that. Not cheap though, I imagine, is it? Uh, it, it can be bought cheap. Yeah. But I didn't fit all this. We still had somebody else come out and do it. Because yeah. this Going right around the weed house was done in one piece. Was it really? Yeah, if I did that, it would have been about 20 pieces and it looked a right <laughs> mess. Um, that's all plywood panels, but up, up and behind that, there is little plywood blocks that yeah. are stuck into the original GRP. So if you were to take all this down, you'd see just little plywood blocks that are bonded up in place to, so you can screw the panels to. If you ever need to take it down, simple. Yeah. Then you've got you, there's wires running through underneath there, so they hide all the wires as well. And a nice chair you got here. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's a suspension chair. Oh, it is suspension, <laughs> but it's, it's only a cheap one. Well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> if you wanted a cab one, you'd be paying over a thousand pounds. Would you really? That was two hundred and forty quid. Oh, it's not bad, is it? Really? It works well. Like I said. Yeah. 
well, well, hope, well, hopefully, well, with this whole design, you won't get that banging. It does actually. It doesn't bang. It doesn't slap yeah. or nothing. Yeah. It just slices through the water. So, if it is rough, the seat does work well. Well, let's have a look outside. See what else you got. So these are a couple of spare seats down yeah, here as well. Flip just, ups. Just, just little fold up seats. You just lift them up. Drop a leg. You got yeah. some stainless legs underneath. Just pull them down. Yeah. So if it's raining, you keep people in the yeah. dry. You can see it here. Nice and pretty comfortable. Yeah. It's only just to sit, sit your backside on. And side storage there as well? Yeah, in that one we've got um, we've got the house battery in that side with we've got the house battery in this side here. Yeah. And then and there's a 70 amp fuse port in there. Like, like a, a breaker, 70 yeah. amp breaker for the main electronics, which is the house switches on this side here. Yeah. There's also a fire blanket, fire extinguishers, there's a fire yeah. extinguisher over that side as well. Um, plenty of, there's a fire extinguisher outside, so plenty of safety equipment. And uh, up the front, uh, your cabin uh, at the front with the barriers with the anchor is, you got a, a separate winch system for that? No, we just bring it up on the buoy, on the old knee buoy. Yeah. We have to bring it up that way and just pull it in, obviously by hand once it's up. Um, you can put a winch on there if you want you to. Could put, you could, it looks like it's got one, doesn't it, in a way where yeah. it's tucked down in there so it's, it's ready to roll. Very simple to put a winch you on can there. You fit, fit one up there, yeah. Where, where the hatch is, you can do away with the hatch and have a winch mounted straight on top. So okay. it's just in here, press the button and it'll pull it out for you. Again, that's optional for anybody who wants to do yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. So this is your fuel tanks? 82 litre Diablo fuel tank from Tech Tanks. Which they're, they work absolutely fine. There's a fuel water separator in there as well. It's all, all easy access to get. And what to. do they take? You say eighty-five. They're eighty-two liters. Eighty-two liters. Yeah. Each one. Each one. Yes, that's one hundred and sixty-four liters of fuel. And there's there's enough room in there as well to get a, a spare twenty-liter can in there. Yeah. If you want to take that extra bit of fuel with you. If you're doing a long run yeah. back in or something like out that. Around, yeah. yeah. Mid channel. Yeah. Speakers on the outside as well, which are connected to the Lawrence hub, so that you can have. Obviously, uh, radio on the outside and on the inside at the same time. Valdunican or something like that. Uh? Valdunican playing or something. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> and then what's your other one here? So you made moulds for all these as well. Yeah, I made all the plugs. I made yeah. wooden hatches first, and yeah. then made the moulds for the hatches. They're all built, laid out with needleplast, no plywood. Oh really? It's all needleplast. You've got the lightness, but you've got probably ten times stronger than ply, and it will never rot. Oh, I think Wayne told it, me about it's, that. It's basically yeah, yeah, a plastic yeah. honeycomb. And you, you put fiberglass layer on either side, and it becomes a solid, rigid panel. Why do they not use that elsewhere in boating, just they, just as they, general they, normal? They or is it now. becoming now? Yeah, they do now. Yeah, but it, it's it is more expensive than ply. It works out. Imagine an eight by four sheet of ply is forty quid, for say. Yeah. An eight by four sheet of neither ply, by the time you put a layer of mat on either side, works out probably about eighty quid. Yeah. It's about yeah. fifty quid a sheet. You get what you pay for. By the time you put your materials in, it's about eighty quid a sheet. But, but it, no it, rotting. Will never ever rot. Yeah. The only ply that's in this boat is in a transom, which has got eight, two layers of 18 mil marine ply bonded in on crest of a bonding paste and then all glassed in as well. And what's in your back hold here? The back ones have the engine batteries in. So you've still got space in there as well? Yeah, you can still store stuff in there. They've just got the engine batteries in. All got build pumps in as well. Easy access, plenty of storage. Just nice and neat. Yeah. And, out of the, way. and the, mid, the box in the centre at the back here, what would. Uh, That's the engine main controls. I'll just put the key. We'll just open her up. In here, we've got your starboard engine. Currently, it's on, so we, we turn that one off. Turn the port one off, so now everything's dead. So, obviously, turn them on. We can now start the engines up, and off you go. You have a voltage sensitive relay, which is charging the starboard engine and also the house battery in the wheelhouse. But it always charges the engine battery first. Did that's that's the main priority is the yeah. engine once it obviously gets you, you, get you home. But once it knows the engine battery is charged, it switches over and charges your house battery. The port engine just charges its own battery on its own. But if ever one did have a flat battery, you can turn the emergency parallel and you can jump start either battery, either engine. So you know what you're always going to start. You're going to be able to start the engine to get home. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You, you can get yourself out of trouble. And if your um, the charge for the house battery 
for some fouls on that starboard engine for some reason, yeah. you can flip the emergency parallel over to the other engine. Yes. And your house battery still gets charged. Oh, so you're still topping up. Yeah. yeah you just you, you you just turn that one off, and it's still charging your house battery as well. So you know your electronics ain't going to go flat on you and cut out. Yeah. Yeah. Nice cutting table, bait table there. Yeah, you didn't that, make that, you bought that one, did you? Actually, a friend of mine designed this bait table. Really? He made the wooden plug. I made one slightly bigger. Yes. But the, the, the mould's been used so many times now, it's it doesn't make a very good table anymore. It's a little yeah, bit that's damaging. That's a nice one, no? But that's, that's a nice one, yeah. A friend of mine made that for his Raider 18. And I thought, I'll, I'll use one of them on my boat. Yeah. But that's just held on, just clipped off. Oh, that's handy, yeah. yeah. Just held on. Nice light Four little pipe clips, 25 yeah. mil pipe clips. And should you want to go swimming in, in, in the yeah. English sea, you've got a swim, we've swim got, ladder. We've got a ladder, mainly because a friend of mine goes diving. Yes. So we, obviously he needs a way of getting back on the boat. So he can come back up to the surface, take yeah. his tanks off, pass the tanks up, drop the ladder over, and he can get out of the water pretty easy. It's just a, a folding ladder. Yeah, good idea, which yeah. Would yeah. Fold and drops right down, and it goes about probably four foot down into the water. So you've plenty of ladder there to step on. What about performance and, and uh, speed? Have you have you done any sort of sea trials and that yet? We've done a few sea trials, nothing really, you know, going flat out. But we've we've had it up to about 35 knots, um, which is more than enough. Yeah. Cruises 20, 22 knots all day long, around probably around 4,000 RPM mark. So it should be nice and economical. And fuel should be good, yeah. Yeah, it'd be very good on fuel. The last time we was out, we only used probably a gallon of fuel per engine. Oh really? Yeah, we, we was we was like, out far. We was only probably out about seven or eight miles, so that's not too bad really. And we did have a play about on the way back in. Exactly as you would do with a boat. Oh, now, what's the jump like coming out out the hole, as they call it in America? What's it like? Does it take a while to get up? Does it come out quickly to get on the, the plane? With the props that are on there, they're four bladed props. They're designed to give you more stern lift. Yes. And it gets up on the plane at around 13, 14 knots, and the back end is well up out the water, she's up on the plane nicely at 14 knots. Yeah. Um, the whole shot of it, once you open the throttles up, it's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. It, does, it, it goes, but you've got to hold on. Yeah. <laughs> you, have, you have got to hold on. You know you're moving. Yeah, you, you do. And it's, she's nice and high out the water as well. She's yeah. nice and dry. Also got the Lawrence 3G broadband radar. You can get a 4G one now, but the 3G was just more in our price range, so. And you've got some nice, what, LED uh, deck yeah. lights, are they? LED. Floodlights um, off of eBay, cheap. Yeah. Fully waterproof, aluminium casing, so they won't rust, and they're very, very bright. They're and bright, use, aren't they? Yeah. Use no power whatsoever from the battery. Yeah. All the lights on the boat actually are LEDs. They all are. of them. All the nav lights, the top one, all the interior lights. We've got lights in the in the roof, and we've got lo low level lights in the wheelhouse as well. So you can have them on at night and still yeah. see out the windows where you're going. Another little gadget as well is the is the pile loudspeaker which is connected to the VHF radio. So it works as a speaker and also as a microphone. So if you're in the weed house and you wanted to talk to somebody, shout at somebody on another boat, it will come through that, but it will also pick them up on the other boat and you can hear it through the speaker oh, on the VHF you. radio. This is a handy little gadget. Yeah. Uh, and, but it's also, because on the VHF, it's got about 10 different horn settings. So you can use that speaker as a horn through the mic on the radio. Through VHF the handset. Radio. Yeah. Which is another little clever, clever gadget from Lawrence. You've got a little storage compartment here in the seat pod. So obviously so you can get to your bolts to bolt the seat on, but it'll also house the, the flares and the other little safety bits of equipment you want to put in there, which are easy to get to. You've got plenty of dry space in there as well. Yeah, and there's two big storage units at the front as well, under the dash. So I'll just open this one up here for you, as you can see this one, which goes right up into the bows. Oh, I see, yes, yeah. There's just a couple of life jackets in there at the moment, and you've got another one on the other side, but that one's empty. You're sure to fill it up with fishing tackle sooner or later. All the light, all, all, your, <laughs> all your, your wet weather gear. Yes, yes. It's all out of the way then, isn't it? So, keeps it nice and dry. Also, sort of boat, I mean, obviously, you, we, we'll put this on the fishing show, but it's a sort of boat that I would think the family man might like, isn't it? Um, because it's dry and stable, that type the, of... The, the only thing about having a family, as a family boat, I would say, is there's, there's no toilet. Yes. So if you're taking your wife out, she wouldn't be very happy. What's wrong with a bucket? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with a bucket. <laughs> but we have got also on here as well, there's a little little heater. Oh, yeah. it's, only, it's only a little 12 volt electric heater, but it's used mainly for blowing onto the windscreen. 
Like a de mister. Yeah, just if you, could, you know, you want to slate in a small boat, you get yeah. down to the windows a bit, Steamed lift it up, up yeah. just fire the engines up, turn it on, and it just That's a good window. idea. That's a good, especially you can shut the door, and obviously, it's, if your cod fishing is cold, one yeah. assumes you can run that for a little while. Just yeah, you can run it for a, probably take, half an hour or Take so, the chill off, yeah. I've got a little stove. Oh, you've got a galley, yeah? Just to make a, oh, little, neat, yeah. make a little cup of tea, yeah. a stainless plate round here just to protect it and that yeah. from, the, from the heat on that one. Um, neat the way it folds out like that. Yeah, and that's just held in on a stainless steel bar, which is glassed in. Did you come up with that idea? Was that one you... Yeah, you, 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 it was oh. my idea. Cause I was like, because the gunner was quite wide, the waterways, so I was like, where am I going to put a little cooker? Yeah, yeah. And I just thought, ah. I'll make a little table which spins out. That's a good idea, like fold that. away like that, I must admit. We've got another little cupboard here, which is just mainly there so you can put your wires through, but there's yeah. also, a, you can store all your cups and other bits yeah, and pieces yeah. and that in there out the They're way. They're quite deep those shelves too. Yeah, yeah, well they're the same depth as what the walkways are around the side of the boat. Very good, I like that folding, I like that folding away good. idea, quite, that's good, yeah. Quite stiff as well, so it yeah. doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. It doesn't swing about because it's stiff. And it's just out of the way. Cut the shelves underneath each, each side as well. Yeah. Just so you can put your general rubbish on, basically. <laughs> so the dashboard I've designed so it's recessed in because it's limited on space. So if you had a flat dash, everything, like the steering wheel comes six inches further back, the seat comes further back, takes up more room. So I recessed it all in, just made a nice bit of shape to it, just to make it look a bit different, really. And it looks quite nice. It works well. There's a little heat event blowing up behind the dash as well onto the windscreen. So if it misses up on the window, you can still clear the window when you're going along with the heater. Automatic build pump switches on there as well, with the engine cut off switches as well. Well, it'd be interesting to come out one day and uh, see what it goes like going along. Well, hopefully. Yeah, fingers we'll crossed. Go, we'll go out in a minute. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, well, what if I've got enough footage left on the film? <laughs> oh, we just run out. What a shame. <laughs> Hope not. Don't worry, I've got another two cameras. And the chance to get out on the water and see this thing in action? Hey, come on, it's got to be done. Just look at the curve, the lines, the sleek lines on that curving outward facing hull. It's called, well I call it a Carolina hull, like they have in America. And that's guaranteed surely to send the water out sideways. And the tunnel, I can't quite get my head around it. It looks like a catamaran, but it's got vertical sides. And then there's the pod at the back, the extension that keeps the outboards away from the stern of the boat so they can be tilted up. What would it be like on the water? Well, it looked absolutely immaculate in finish. There's no question that the finish was spot on. And you can see those engines, those nice big Mercs, look like they're doing the job. They're powering the boat. We're only out in the, uh, in the Solent, by the way, on a pretty choppy afternoon just to give it a little trial run there and zipping along at speed, trust me, it is a lovely, wide, flat, stable platform. Don't forget, I'm trying to film there, bouncing along, going on, going along, and it's absolutely, well, not bad at all, is it? And that's going into a head sea where boats like, say, a catamaran are prone to bang. And I've got a Wilson flyer that's got the cathedral hull, same principle, you can get battered, I wouldn't change it for the world though. I've even leaned out right sideways filming there, as far out as I can, and you should get facefuls of spray. And am I getting facefuls of spray? No, I'm not. Very impressed with that. You can see here, there's hardly any water going through that tunnel. I don't understand it. Is it the vertical sides that you've got that a catamaran doesn't have? It just seems to send, well, I know it's that sort of Carolina curved hull. It sends it away outwards so you don't get spray inside the boat, it punches it out sideways, it's certainly something different. Well that's enough of all the information and boat building talk. We're going to play you out with, let's think about it, men, boys toys, fast boats, it's got to be, yes, rock music. Oh, sorry for all those who don't like it, but with a mix like that, let's close out the show. I'd see this boat in slow motion, see what you think of the hull, and get some blasting man's rock music. Yeehaw!